mark in the count. The swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues. Peace, everyone. Welcome back, and thank you so much for checking out Brick Something News, Needless Ephemera We Saw, where I break down a couple of the coolest things that I've seen recently, all in the hopes to maybe introduce you to something cool or strike up a conversation. Before we get into all that, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and don't forget that little bell icon so you know when these things drop. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at a bunch of news, and then I want to share two people that I really, really think you ought to know. So if this is your first time checking out the Brick Something News, it's a bit of a grab bag. And sometimes I actually show you some newsworthy stuff. And I call that, that's what's up. First up, the Thunder Tank has arrived. Yes, folks, Super 7 dropped a huge toy on us. For roughly $500, you too can own an awesome version of the Thunder Tank. Take a look at this image from Jay Gladfelter over over Geek Dad Life. He knows how to show things off. Here we see the Thunder Tank front and center, and right behind that, the USS Flag. Easily one of the largest toys ever made. And above and around some other large toys that you might be familiar with, including the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Terradrome, the Death Star playset from Kenner, and on and on and on and on. I don't really have a whole lot to say, because I don't have the toy. But I've just been checking out these reviews, and it's insane. So Jay's dropped a video that you really should check out where he runs you through the features and frankly what stands out to me, the scale. Look how huge the Thunder Tank is in his hands. This thing is no joke. It barely looks like he can carry this thing. Ooh, before I get too far, see this QR code? Scan it. It'll pop up every now and then to remind you that I've put together a Google Doc that has all the links to everything that I'm talking about. You really should check it out. Everything that I'm talking about in this episode, as well as past news episodes, should be there. Super easy to find, super helpful, and at the end of the day, I really do want you to check out these things. So for example, there's a direct link to Jay's review at Geek Dad Life. Check it out. And all over Instagram, the people that actually were able to grab this thing have been putting together some cool photos and videos. This one comes from Super Dave Reviews, which again is available at that document which you can access using the QR code, hint, hint, wink, wink. And I just wanted to show this all set up with figures posed. You've got some Super 7 Thundercats hanging out, but also a Motu Classics figure or Gargoyles figure, all gathered around this awesome Thunder Tank toy in a pretty cool Third Earth diorama. It doesn't seem like people realize it, but I think this toy is going to be one of those that goes down in toy history, along with things like Motu Classics Castle Grayskull, Super 7 Snake Mountain, Galactus. All right, to go back to something that I talked about last episode, Fresh Monkey Fiction did a character called The Hidden as part of their Eagle Force line that's 100% a Micronauts homage. In true Micronauts time traveler fashion, they were doing every single color of the rainbow. Take a look at these guys. Not only do they do the cool translucent body, but they all come with these kind of unique heads. You can get all the colors shown here except for the orange over at freshmonkeyfiction.com. And then over at Big Bad Toy Store, they've got an exclusive with this orange one. The colors are kind of odd here, but yeah, that's the orange one. Check out that head. Obviously, that straight up silver head is dope, but take a look at those alt heads. Some really cool sci-fi stuff going on. My only wish is that they came bigger. These are four inch figures, which is rad, but I'm totally stuck in the somewhere between six and a half to seven inch scale right now. Fresh Monkey Fiction, if you release these in a seven inch figure, I'm all over it. I'd totally be that guy who'd get one of every color. Think about it. Now let's shift to something kind of weird. How about a desert detective? I know next to nothing about this except these pictures. Apparently it's one of those that's gonna drop on 5K toys by a studio named San Yuan Cooperative. 112 scale, just really cool looking chunky lizard straight up out of the Wild West. Who knows? 
It's just super quirky, seven point inches tall. I'm gonna keep an eye out on these. It doesn't immediately seem like something that fit on my shelf, but I don't know. I just like weird toys. Take a look at this stuff. That coat looks really cool. And from what I can tell, you can totally remove it. Just a couple of other angles. Looks to me like the jaw's fully articulated. <laughs> He's got those weird quirky little arms. I love it. You know what else I love? Variety on my shelf. Now, to be clear, I know next to nothing about modern wrestling, and apparently I don't know much about older wrestling. Because this guy, sorry to admit, I don't know who he is. Apparently, he's a pro wrestling superstar. And when I take a look at the back of that card, I recognize Mr. T. I recognize The Rock. Definitely recognize Randy Macho Man Savage, who was big right around the one year that I really focused on WWF. Yes, I said F. So apparently, there's now a five and a half inch figure of Typhoon which, by the way, kind of reminds me of Hurley from Lost. Anyway, what I love about it is this new body. It's thicker, less defined, but apparently it's full-on compatible with Masters of the Universe Origins figures, which means you can full-on take He-Man's head, his arms, his legs, and pop them on this body. As demonstrated by Charlie5.5 from Instagram, you can make some cool custom Eternian characters to put on your shelf. I am serious about needing some variety on the shelf, and I love that this new body exists. And I can't wait to see what else customizers end up doing with this body. <laughs> Man, it's just so cool. Speaking of Masters of the Universe, as someone who's in love with this property, I'd really love to see it continue with younger people. And on that note, Imagine X is dropping these new XL Masters of the Universe figures, He-Man and Skeletor. You might be familiar with Imagine X figures that are a little bit smaller, but these XL figures stand at about seven and a half inches, I believe, and they do like all sorts of properties. For example, they've done DC characters. Here you have a Batman along with some unique characters that Fisher Price has created. That shark is amazing. That luchador is amazing. That robot. And to think that we're going to get a He-Man and a Skeletor that can hang out with this cool shark pirate or this cool robot or even Batman. It's awesome. I mean, how about some dinosaurs from Jurassic Park or the Joker or Superman? First, the sculpts look really cool. I love the way He-Man looks with that sort of simplified face. The sort of standard Imagine X body is very cool. But more importantly, I really hope this interests kids. I'd love for a new generation to be interested in He-Man and Skeletor. Because we all know that a lot of us are just getting way too old. In fact, we're so old that we remember this guy. Masterverse is doing a new adventure Skeletor. Apparently, I'm super late to this because I actually do collect Masterverse and completely miss the news that they were doing a new adventure Skeletor. I'm not the biggest fan of this cartoon, but I'm all about wacky Masters of the Universe designs. And the stuff that came out of New Adventures was pretty rad, especially when it comes to the villains. And I gotta say, this looks amazing in this buck. If you're not familiar with what he looked like in the cartoon, here you go. This is from the mini comic, actually. And I gotta hand it to the Mattel sculptors on this, because if you take a look at that version and then look at this Masterverse figure, well done. I'm just loving every design choice they made. I think the skull looks fantastic. That helmet looks really cool on him. And the fact that you can actually take that off and see his skull head, beautiful. So this figure actually has come out before. There was the vintage toy that looked like that. I'm sorry. No. God bless you if this was your toy and if something you loved. It's not a good looking toy. Which only makes me appreciate how much the Mattel designers did on this figure. I love how they translated this armor and got all the details of those little skulls and even how the actual sort of tech on his chest works. It's a pretty faithful translation, but needless to say, plus is the figure. Now, they also did this in Masters of the Universe Classics, which frankly, not my favorite. You know that I love the Four Horsemen's work, but this wasn't my favorite figure that they've done. And in general, the Classics buck kind of got tiring for me. As I was saying earlier, I like diversity on my shelf, and that same chunky buck on every single character got a little bit exhausting. 
And when it comes to this new adventure Skeletor that originally was a super sort of slender and skinny character, the Massiverse totally wins for me, which is great because it's coming. So I've actually gone back to watch it and it's always struck me that this was the toy that we got. But in the cartoon originally, he looked really different. He looked like this. And I really love this design. I just wish they would do a modern action figure of this character with a huge sort of like skull chest, which totally reminds me of Guy King. I love the helmet. He's got these big chunky robotic feet. I just love it. So keep buying those Masterverse figures, folks, because I want to see this one on my shelf. Speaking of things you should totally buy if you're not hip to it yet, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom are coming. In fact, Spiro Toys, who makes Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, are packing up roughly like 900 orders to ship out to the people who back the Kickstarter. But the good news is, they're coming. I'm waiting on my own big order of these guys that should be coming relatively soon. Easily my most anticipated toy of 2023. But until I get them in hand, at least I have YouTube to turn to. Dan Larson himself was able to review this Chinari Legionary and the Horrid Ravenger. Again, use that QR code. It'll take you right to his review. As well as this review of Tiberius by Toy Bro. And as you can see on the right side, Toy Bro did a great job of posing up Tiberius and showing off how awesome the articulation on these figures is going to be. Look at him holding that gun. I cannot wait. If you're watching this, I'm curious. Did you know about AWOG before this? That's Animal Warriors of the Kingdom by Spiro. And if so, did you order any? It's kind of exciting to see a new toy line launch. And this is going to be a good one, folks. If you haven't figured it out, I have a thing for anthropomorphized animals. So when a toy line that's known for producing awesome gladiator figures like these two that I've recently reviewed on the channel, all of a sudden says, by the way, we can do some other things like um, minotaurs. They're literally putting their hands into my wallet and taking out my credit cards. So this is the concept art we got months back, and they are absolutely glorious. But then back in November, I think, at LA Designer Con, they started showing off the prototypes of these things. Shout out to Ed Ramirez, who posted these to Facebook back then. His reaction was perfect. Whoa! Which is totally how I felt when I saw these. Again, I was used to these. I had no idea they were going to go full-on fantasy. And as you see here from the 5K Toys post, these things are coming soon. Here's a couple of more shots. Zesrae's fully showing off how intimidating these two characters are going to be to the rest of the gladiators. And they both look great. First, we've got this all black one with a giant tall horns. The sculpt work on this is impeccable. Again, check out the review of Ambulus here and Berenice just to get a sense of how detailed these figures are. I love the weapons. Take a look at that morning star that's sort of strapped around or chained around his arm. That's amazing. And you'll notice the jaw is articulated and sort of well hidden um, by the sort of cheek area. Here's the orange one. Oh, it just looks amazing. And here we go side by side and you can see the alternate feet, all the different hands and the weapon. Those feet are going to be interesting. I suspect that those hooves may not quite be enough to hold them up, but we'll see. Either way, it's all good because they're giving you those big, muscular human feet to keep these figures up. Man, what do you all think of these? Let me know in the comments below. If these interest you at all, keep checking out 5ktoys.com. <laughs>
this might be something that I check out. So in the last episode of Brick Something News, I talked about Super 7's Bootsy Collins figure that's coming out in the reaction line, and I made an offhanded comment about how they seem to have a thing for bassists. Well, apparently I'm not wrong. So now they're doing a Sid Vicious figure in reaction, and yeah, they're doing that Cliff Burton as an ultimate. To be clear, Sid Vicious sucked as a bass player, but Cliff Burton, super inspiring as a bassist. And I'm so happy that they actually are making this. So Super 7 actually did a reaction figure of Cliff Burton. It totally caught my eye because I figured, when am I ever going to see a Cliff Burton action figure? But at the end of the day, I don't do reaction. Those figures are way too small and just don't make sense for my collection. So then now they're doing an Ultimates? Ah, and he's wearing a Misfits t-shirt. Yeah, I see you, Super 7. Someone over there plays bass. So you're getting to learn a little bit more about me. Yes, I play bass. And if you haven't figured it out from the name and the stuff behind me, I love Lego. So I want to take a moment to actually highlight something coming out of the Lego community. In this case, it's from Citizen Brick, this awesome company from Chicago. If you're not familiar with how this works, this company actually buys actual Lego and uses their pad printer to make custom parts. What you're seeing here is a biblically accurate angel character. So to kind of break down what's in this little kit of theirs. So those wings are standard Lego pieces that I think came out of the Chima line with the birds. The body of this thing, if you will, is a white radar dish and a uh, one by one round tile that also has that printed eyeball. I love Citizen Brick. They just do really cool, quirky stuff. And just kind of wanted to highlight that here. Be not, not afraid, afraid, folks. I, I go before, before you always. I have no smooth transition from this to the next one, so. Dragons! In the last episode of Break Something News, I broke down how Creative Beast Studio is working on their Cyberzoic line, and apparently it's going to feature dragons. I showed this one, which they're calling their Lizard Dragon, but since then they posted an update showing us what the head sculpt's going to look like. So the founder of Creative Beast Studios, David Silva, was posting this on his Instagram, a 3D print of that Lizard Dragon head. I don't know if this is one-to-one -one or slightly larger than what they're doing, but you can kind of see it in his hand. And what really hits me is the articulation on this thing. There's like one, two, three, four joints just to sort of make the neck and the head work, not to mention the um, articulated jaw. The details on this are amazing. And if you're familiar with what Creative Beast has done with their Beast of the Mesozoic line, that's no surprise. He also showed this gigantic wing. This thing is going to be huge. He even says in his message, maybe a tad too big. I don't know. It's definitely going to eat up a lot of shelf space, but that thing is going to be ridiculously cool. Here he posted a shot for scale, head to butt before the tail starts. We're talking already 12 inches. This line is going to be crazy good. But Creative Beast Studio isn't the only indie studio making cool dinosaur toys. Let's shift over to Axie Toys, who's known for that Carnosaur or Carnotaurus? Carnosaurus? I don't know. That guy. This figure got a lot of attention when it came out this year. Super articulated, all sorts of little bits of armor that can be removed and customized. So the other day when I saw that they were announcing a new character in their sort of Tyrannosaurus Rex, and that 5K Toys is already announcing that the pre-order is coming soon, the ears perked up. Now it's in super early stages as we see here. On the left, that's basically a really, really early prototype. Obviously, it doesn't have the same level of detail with all the scales, etc. The head looks kind of almost finished, but I'm intrigued by the idea of taking a T-Rex and making it more anthropomorphic. Clearly, this is going to be a really big, chunky figure. And right next to it is Axie Toys' Diablo figure that I believe is roughly like nine inches or so. So clearly, this Tyrannosaurus Rex is going to be a beast. There isn't much more, but we do get a glimpse of some of the concept art behind the armor. What you're seeing here on the top, I believe, is a helmet, basically. Yeah, it's like a Triceratops skull fashioned into a helmet for this Tyrannosaurus Rex. The concept is just wild. And I believe what we're seeing on the bottom are um, pauldrons from different views. And if you know anything about that Carnosaurus or Carnotaurus or whatever it was, all the armor, like I said, kind of comes apart and you can take off the horns and all the little, you know. So it looks like based on this design, the same thing's going to happen for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm assuming what they're showing us is that you can take all the little bits and pieces off the armor to customize it exactly how you want it on your shelf. 
As you know, I'm a sucker for the indies. I love sort of seeing what new creative things people are coming up with, and Axie Toys is definitely on that list of companies that I want to watch. So there you go, another Battlefield Dinosaur coming soon. Speaking of awesome indie toy makers, Four Horsemen Studios has clearly been the indie darling of the toy world with their mythic legions line and now their figure obscura and cosmic legions coming out they're doing big things but if you know anything about their model it's a little bit tricky because when they release a new wave of figures they sell them first direct as pre-orders to their customers and that's the cheapest way you can get a mythic legions or a figure obscura or cosmic legions which is kind of odd because if you're a retailer who's going to carry their line you're probably sitting there going like, man, why would anybody buy from me when they can buy directly from the Four Horsemen for cheaper? And of course, there's a lot of sort of like finer points around that. But the point is, it is a little bit tricky. So what does a company like Four Horsemen Studios do to make sure that the retailers, one, realize how much they actually appreciate what they do for them as a company? Well, They've released a whole surprise wave of figures that you can only get at the retailers. These are figures that the Four Horsemen will not be selling direct. And if you know much about their line, some of these are featuring characters that people have been clamoring for. Without getting too into the weeds about what exactly is in this line, let me just tell you that this is a huge deal. And this move fully demonstrates why the Four Horsemen are so good at what they do. They know how to treat the fans well. They know how to treat the retailers that support them well. And really, they're creating a new business model that I think the toy world is going to have to wrap their heads around these next couple of years. Particularly the big boys, the Hasbros, the Mattels. Because Four Horsemen is figuring out a way to create toys that fans love and are willing to spend a little bit more on. But we buy them in different ways. We don't go to our Targets. We don't go to our Walmarts to get Mythic Legions. You can't. We rely on buying directly from them online or from other online retailers or sometimes at conventions. Anyway, maybe I'll make a whole episode explaining that a little bit more. Suffice to say, this is a big deal. First up, they're doing a new Headless Horseman, which a lot of people have talked about. The colors on this are amazing. Definitely it's gotten people's attention. And best of all, in my opinion, glow-in-the-dark features. This thing is straight-up Scooby-Doo style. From the same figure obscure line that the Headless Horseman is from, last year we got Father Christmas in the recognizable red and white design. So what do the Four Horsemen do for a retail release? They basically give us a completely different figure. Yes, I know it's all parts reuse, but the new deco and colorways, the brand new color of the soft goods, fantastic. That head with the brown beard, that's a whole other character. And if you're familiar with Mythic Legions, a central play feature is popping off these parts and creating new characters. So I'm looking at this thing, and even though I have the original, there's so many new things going on here that I could potentially use for custom figures that it totally feels worth it. I know, it's weird. Again, take notes, Hasbro. But the Four Horsemen didn't stop there. They didn't just give us a new version of the Headless Horseman. They didn't just give us a Father Christmas. They said, you know what? How about that fan favorite transparent figure that we made in Mythic Legions, Hagnon? What if we re-released him? Blue Hagnon, which was teased in some artwork a while back, is finally here. The original of this is one of my favorite figures in my collection. And to think that we're going to be getting blue versions of the same parts is awesome. And again, they could have stopped there, but no. What else do you do? What if they created a whole new character and figure? Yes, here is Lee J, an elf that frankly looks a little bit like me. Many of you have no idea what it's like to be buying toys as a kid and never seeing one that reflects your face. So to me, this is a huge deal. And apparently this head is actually modeled after an actual fan. I think this is such an amazing figure, not just for that head, but take a look at this armor. We haven't had a character in this colorway. Yes, we have some gold armor coming out, but not in the sort of gold and black. Awesome. Man, the Four Horsemen did it again. They're just like straight up mic dropped. 
This entire wave is going to be available at all retailers to be pre-ordered on March 1st. This is not an on-hand stock situation. You can basically keep pre-ordering, and as many as are pre-ordered, that's how many they're going to make. It's a huge gift to retailers. Again, the figures are great, but the business practices are fascinating. I see you, Four Horsemen, and I appreciate you. Oh, almost forgot. They also gave this figure an awesome alternate orc head. Again, in brand new colors. We haven't yet seen this color of orc. And I think he looks amazing. And I know I'm being greedy, but I need to see this head done as a panthro figure. Just saying, moving on. Last time I talked to you about the Savage Crucible Kickstarter, which at the time hadn't yet launched. Well, it's launched. And in a really short time, they hit their initial goal, so much so that they unlocked Wave 2 and Wave 3. I'm not really going to run down the details of this, but you really should check out that Savage Crucible Kickstarter to find out more. Again, check out that QR code and it'll take you right to it. But what I did want to talk about is how fast this thing funded. As of the filming of this video, they're at $338,127 pledged, and their original goal was $120,000. Got 990 backers so far. There's still 38 days to go. This thing ends on April 1st. I haven't even put in my order yet. I'm still trying to figure out what makes the most sense for my budget and my shelf, but I'm definitely going to be ordering these. So Savage Crucible is clearly off to a really good start, and this line's definitely going to be making waves in the toy world. But in this episode, I wanted to highlight a little bit more about how Savage Crucible is coming together. If you're unfamiliar, the person who started Savage Crucible also runs a company called My Action Figure Customs. MAFC makes custom parts for Mythic Legions figures. So in doing MAFC, Rob's been able to work with some really talented designers and customizers in this community, and he's leveraged some of those relationships into Savage Crucible. For example, take the folks over at Strupp Family. They're working with Savage Crucible to create the soft goods for this Jaeger figure. Their work is quality, and folks know it. So to bring them on board to work on Savage Crucible was a super smart move. And it didn't stop there. If you're familiar with Mythic Legions at all, you've definitely come across Nikki Nicole Customs, who's one of the most amazing painters I've ever seen in the toy world. Her work is amazing. Definitely check her out over on Instagram at Nikki Nicole Customs. She's also been working on Savage Crucible, doing paints. Take a look at these two figures that she's worked on. The color blending and variation on these fish is just out of this world. I mean, take a look at how that sort of purple blends into that dark brown, and you've got that bright pop of blue. So many smart color decisions, and they're just incredibly fun. To think that she's working on Savage Crucible that then is going to be mass-produced for all of us to have in hand is just mind-blowing. I'm not sure which other figures Nikki Nicole's worked on. I suspect she's worked on others. So forgive me if I'm going to show you some other figures that she's worked on. But the bottom line is they've got some great people behind this line. Which is probably why they've got like $330,000 so quickly. Anyways, let me just show you some of the other figures and let's sort of ooh and ah and gawk together. First up, we've got Como of the Isles, which is definitely one of the figures that I'll be getting. He's a sort of half lizard person, half human. It's definitely something straight out of classic Star Trek or even like Farscape, if you will. But in this fantasy setting, I absolutely think it's so cool. Check out the armor on here and you can kind of see the detail work. All those little scales, that pop of blue going on in his face. Again, really smart color decisions. Super fun. We have to take a look at some of these details a little closer. Man, look at the sculpts on these. Look at those eyes. It's wild to think that these are being mass produced in a factory. So much skill and talent. Take a look at the back. This thing looks straight up like a lizard. You can tell they did so much research just to get these things right. Man. Again, looking at this armor, look at how they got that sort of like lava effect on that thing. That's just amazing. Ooh, the Piranoids. First off, 
once again, they're involving some great people. For their photography, they're bringing in D Amazing, who seems to be doing most of their promo shots. D Amazing's work is fantastic. And luckily, he has his own YouTube channel where he gets to share not just his photography, but also a little bit of his insights into these action figures. He's actually gotten a lot of these prototypes in hand and done reviews. Again, check out that QR code because it'll take you right to these things that I'm talking about. Just look at this fish, man. I'm blown away again by the paints and the sculpts. Look at the inside of the mouth, man. Yes. Take a look at the inside of the mouth. Oh, these figures are going to be amazing. Let's check out some more. Man, I just, I just can't. Just, just look. Just look. These things are amazing. If you want to hear a little bit more details about the whole Kickstarter and the line, I actually did a live stream over on Highly Articulated's channel a while back. Again, use a QR code and I'll link you straight to that. Check it out because me and Adam kind of covered quite a bit when it comes to the Savage Crucible line, as well as the broader sort of indie landscape. I thought it was a really great conversation. Worth checking out. We're not done with Savage Crucible yet. So I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to fully edit this video and publish it. But on Friday, February 24th, Savage Crucible Kickstarter is going to announce their stretch goals. They're real close to unlocking the first one, which comes in at $345,000, and you see them all listed there. I have a feeling that by April 1st, a lot of these are going to be unlocked, which means if you're back in this line, you're going to be getting a lot of little goodies. So keep an eye out. Let's see what other good stuff Savage Crucible has in store for us. Whew, that was a lot of news, folks. Let's go ahead and switch things up a little, and I want to introduce you today to two people that I think you really need to be aware of. So sometimes in the news, I'm just going to take a look at photographers and artists that I think are just amazing. And when I do that, I call it in focus. So for the first time on Brick Something News, I want to highlight an illustrator, and that's Zach Kinsella, super talented comic book artist and illustrator who's all up in the geek world. Zach actually has his own YouTube channel called Toy Art, so you should definitely check that out. Again, use that QR code. But what I wanted to highlight today was Zach's take on some of my favorite characters in nerddom. If you're an old person like me and you had an old Nintendo, you probably came across Metroid. And you got through that game playing as this character named Samus Aran in this armor. You couldn't see a face and you were just like, this is awesome. This is awesome. And then it ends, and Samus Aran takes off their armor, and it's revealed that Samus Aran is a woman. It was such a cool moment in video game history. And I love that Zack drew this awesome picture of Samus fighting Metroid. I'm not going to hold it against him that he's mainly talking about the Super Nintendo version, but it's cool. That was an awesome game, too. But I got to say, this Samus picture is just fantastic. That should pretty much give you a sense of the sort of kinetic energy that Zack brings to his artwork. So let's take a look at Gambit. Again, that same sort of energy from a pretty much stoic portrait. His line work is amazing, his use of color. It takes a special talent to take these characters that we know and love from other comics or video games that have a certain art direction and style, but then to apply your own personal style and make it work? Man, that's a gift. I love Zach's work. And I also love that he does things like this where he'll give us alternate colorways and then even give us the sort of behind the scenes process. But hey, back to video games. How about Boo from Super Mario Brothers? That's what he looks like when you've got your back to him. And then over here is what Boo looks like when you're staring at him. Love it. Perfect renditions of the character. But you can't look at Zack's work without talking about his take on Masters of the Universe. Look at these awesome portraits of the evil warriors. Just fantastic. And last but definitely not least, Zach did a bunch of portraits of G.I. Joe characters. I'm only going to show you some of them. You have to follow that QR code and check out Zach Kinsella on Instagram. And just marvel at all the cool work he's done. But to whet your appetite, boom. God, some of these are just my favorite toys ever as a kid. I love how cool they look. Man, that flash. Just, oh, woo! My favorites, Dreadnoughts. Oh, man, I'm a Dreadnought kid. 
I loved Zartan and the Dreadnoughts. Just seeing these three OGs together, fantastic. But I like the newer guys too. Check it out. Man, that's some straight up Mad Max goodness right there. I love Zach's work, man. Just love the characterizations, how he sort of bulked certain characters up way more. The gestures he's got going on. I'm living in the United States, so that was a peace sign. Apologies to the folks in the UK. Blame Zach. Okay, one last tease. Boom. <laughs> Nemesis Enforcer's amazing looking. Is that Tomac, Zaymot? I forget. Who's got the scar? I think it's Zaymot. But, mm. And of course, Wetsuit. Man, just like some really, really cool stuff. Check out Zach's work. He's got a couple of graphic novels out. I really love this stuff with the cryptids. He's got some books for sale. And he's also got his YouTube channel where he's actually done some sort of like, um, not quite live drawings, but he sort of shows you his process. And he does some great breakdowns of toys. Again, folks, QR code. Since we're on the G.I. Joe tip, allow me now to introduce you to another amazingly creative person. This is a childhood homie. I grew up with this guy. He does some amazing custom toys. So actually, let's shift over to the customs corner and let me now introduce Julius Downey. You can check out his Instagram over at Imaginary Action. Julius Downey is doing some amazing stuff, particularly with G.I. Joe Classifieds. So here you've got a motorcycle that I believe came with a Punisher from Marvel Legends that he's sort of tweaked and customized. You see a lot of scratch built pieces. He's doing this old school, just cutting up plastic bits and gluing things together to get the exact design that he wants. I think he's also worked in some other bits that he's bought. Not totally sure but I'm definitely gonna be bringing him on the channel soon to be able to talk a little bit more about his process and how exactly he's achieving this stuff. But this motorcycle is insane. It's kind of hard to sort of see what's going on here, but if I can kind of zoom in and focus some things, take a look at that gun that he's got in his hand. I'm not fully sure how he did it. I think he made those pieces or maybe like bought pieces and put them together. Again, we'll bring him on the channel and figure out. But what's really cool about that is the thought that went behind this, you'll sort of see that same gun is now here on the rear end of the bike turned upside down so that if Major Blood is driving, he can actually reach back and fire that thing behind him. Pretty cool. And you sort of see these magazines on the side. You got the detail vanity plate, bad blood. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening here. And of course, the paint on these things, super cool. Ooh, actually, let me show you the brake lines too. That's all done with this little tiny thread. Very cool. And take a look at this Gatling gun here in the middle. That thing actually can kind of clip out and be removed and Major Blood can carry it. Very cool. There's plenty of pictures of this thing over on his Instagram. So again, check out that QR code, head over there. But it's not just the vehicles that he's doing. He also customizes his G.I. Joe classifieds. As a kid who grew up in the 80s, I really appreciate that he's taken these new G.I. Joe classifieds and kind of tried to strip them back or pull them back to the more classic looks. Here you've got Gung Ho. So on the left, you've got his custom take on that more classic look. And I believe the figure on the right is the one that Hasbro did, just for comparison. I really love the paint treatment that he did on this thing. It's still sort of honoring that like, weird aqua color that gung-ho wore but in a way that maybe makes more sense if this were like a real dude on the field i don't know and of course we got scarlet o'hara looking perfect again it's the new gi joe classified figure with all the new sculpt and armor etc but then in a way that totally brings us back to that vintage figure. And on the right, he took one of the many roadblock figures that Hasbro wanted to offer us and turned it into a heavy duty. Really cool stuff. And you can see all the painting that he's put into these things to really bring out some of the sculptural details that are there that maybe we just don't see. All right, what else do we got? Ooh, you got rock and roll, right? Um, they started classifieds. They didn't start with those original figures that we got as kids. So Julius had to go back to the original machine gunner, rock and roll, and put them on that bike that we had as kids, complete with the you know gold machine gun belts around his body. Just very cool. I'll zoom in here so you can take a look at the face. Good stuff. 
Here's a Cobra Commander built on a um, Baron Zemo figure from Marvel Legends. I think that coat looked great. And finally on the right, you've got Julius Downey doing a completely original custom character. It's a sort of cyborg character that leads the bats. I actually bought Julius a bunch of those um, attachments from, I think it was uh, Jay's Armory. I think that's what it's called. And those are those painted up. I think it's such a cool character and I just really love the custom work he's doing. Take a look at that, folks. I mean, why wasn't that a G.I. Joe character back in the 80s, right? Very cool. So speaking of custom Joes, he's actually taken some characters that we know from other places and brought them into the G.I. Joe team. Here you got Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dutch, right? Hanging out with Roblox, ready to look for some predators. And hell, why not bring Mr. T along for the ride, right? You know, don't you remember that special mission that Duke, Roblox, Dutch, and Mr. T went on? That was great. Anyway, Julius Downey's doing some amazing stuff and I just thought you needed to know who he was. Follow him over on Instagram at Imaginary Action. Again, use that QR code. You won't be disappointed, folks. Again, I'll definitely be bringing Julius Downey onto the Brick Something channel, and we'll be doing a little bit more in-depth talk about his custom work. But let me leave you with this. I happen to know that he's been working on this amazing G.I. Joe classified vehicle that I think a lot of longtime Joe fans are going to be blown away by. And if I may, let me just sort of tease it with this shot. What's going on here? I don't know. I'll just tell you that it's absolutely in G.I. Joe classified scale. And the details of this thing are amazing. If you thought that that major blood bike was cool, you're not ready for what this thing is. I've been watching him since the beginning, even with like cardboard mock-ups of this thing. I've seen it transformed into plastic and it's totally come together. It's being painted up right now. It'll be a while because it's a complex project, but I really just wanted to tease that. And that, friends, brings us to the end of another episode of Brick Something News. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of the needless ephemera that we saw. And don't forget, you can use the QR code or even look in the video description for the direct link to the document that'll give you access to all the stuff that I talked about in this episode. So once again, thank you for hanging out and I'll see you next time. Again, I really appreciate you checking out Brick Something. If you liked what you saw, click the like and subscribe buttons because those tiny acts really help grow the channel. If you're looking for even more geeky goodness, take a look at the video on the left by a fellow member of the Legion of Lesser Toy Tubers. And until next time, peace, peace and power. power.